Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 98 Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. And there are two words there, so we need to ask ourselves before we begin to understand the meaning of the word responsible and peaceable. But I want to make a comment first that if there is something that is multiplied in our time, there is a multiplicity of the irresponsibility. You are going to be. You are going to prove it by your experiences and those around you that irresponsibility has become the order of the day. The evidences are everywhere in the homes, in the church, in the schools, on the streets, on the TV, and other media outfits. <laughs> Actually, right now, to be a single mother is very Fashionable. It attracts attention. It's a status symbol. To assume a masculine disposition to prove a point is fashionable. Many have also felt like so much neglected, so much forgotten. So much look down to that they are retreated into a shell. They are withdrawn into a shell. For being single, looks like you are becoming a nobody. I dare to say that when they tell us how to move here, to so move first one kind. Am I speaking the minds? Yes. So the issue is that it will take discretion to prevent irresponsibility. It will take discretion, it will take wisdom, it will take you having a revelation of your true identity and a true call of call upon your life. It will take you having a vision of where you are going to if you will be able to be blessed by God and approve as a responsible person. Let us define terms. I know I have many English majors here. If you say someone is responsible, let me mention what the dictionary said. The Miriam Webster's dictionary says this. To be responsible means to be accountable. Are you listening there? No. To be responsible means to be, to be accountable. To be responsible means to be answerable. Answerable. You are answerable to somebody. To be responsible means to be liable. I think lawyers among us will know that you are liable. What does these words? I hope they are easily understood. Do we know what it means to be liable? Please, can someone tell us who is very clear about liable? Yes. God bless you. Liable means you are 
are convictable. You are convictable. You can be convicted and prison. So, let me learn this. I want to learn English one. So, you know what? It's the opposite of just one. It means you are convictable. You are, you are capable of being convicted. So, you can be charged to court. So, you are liable. So, I hope you are getting the message. To be responsible, I'm not finished the definition, but I had to stop because my motto in life is no assumption, no presumption, no carelessness. So when I was asked, yes, you understand, yes, you understand. But I said, no, stop. Be sure they understood. And I discovered you do not understand the meaning of lying. Liable means you are can be convicted charged. You are found guilty. So it's just you that like this a jury watching over your life. Are you hearing me? You are not hearing me. I said when they say you are liable, they say jury. Who is a jury? What is a jury? Okay? It's judge and his counsel. That's from the judges and others who have the right to examine you. You are still defining responsible. Does it make us afraid now? No. Is it putting some fears? No. Be honest. No. 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 Okay, we're still talking about responsible. Responsible means to be trustworthy. We know that one. To be trustworthy. You can count on you means dependable. To be dependable. To be predictable. To be high. Whether someone is safe or not, it's predictable. Responsibility is not a right for men to decide for themselves. Responsibility is a duty. It is an obligation. It is a charge. Let me repeat that. Responsibility is what? A duty. It's an obligation. And it's a charge. So, it's not someone, someone say, you see, whether you agree or not, me, I know I'm responsible. Are you me? So this thing will not allow me to dance. I need to have someone to hold me to Thank you for coming. So responsibility is not something you are proud to move around and say, you know I'm very responsible, actually. It's something that somebody will examine. Somebody has to examine and agree with you. Responsibility is a burden to be born. Responsibility is what? A burden. Like I came in here and gave a lady my notebooks, book and some my Bible and said, hold it for me. That was giving her what? Responsibility. And when I mention it, I said, please hold it for me. That was a charge. Are you hearing me? Yes. That was a charge. A charge is, is a spoken instruction. I get instructions. I say, hold it for me, please. And so I can go back and say, please, where is the notebook I gave you? Which means that she's answerable to me right now. She's here. Huh? Yeah. Answer me. Mm -hmm. So if I ask for a notebook, but if I ask for a Bible, have I seen the Bible yet? Good. She's answerable. The person that charged her with the responsibility will ask her to answer. Is it making sense now? Yes. I'm repeating that because the moment we understand the meaning. Our discussion will be easier to manage. I repeat again that to be responsible means to be accountable, 
Please, you should give, keep account of your life. Please, do you have accountants here? Many of them? Uh, let's see your hand. Okay, good. Please, my name. Come on. What do you do? Account. Keep account. What do you do? So, uh, uh, you are not like that. Clear. 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 Evidence of what you are given. The financial information. For example, they have given you one million naira to spend, and they call it to account. Now, if you account for five hundred thousand, half. Have, have you done a good account? No. You account for nine hundred thousand. Is it a good account? No. Yeah, an account for the exact amount. Thank you so much. Account. Hey, I wonder what they've given us to account for. I wonder. Because singleness, spinter, good is a season. We are going to come to that. It's not a permanent status. It's a season. So we have said we've understood accountable, answerable, liable, and trustworthy. And we have mentioned the issue of burden. Burden for me. Please. Hold it for me. Feel the way I'm feeling. And please don't drop it. If I get this lady my Bible, I'm not able to keep. And she stood up here, went somewhere here, and dropped on the way and sat down there. She has not carried the body like yet. So she's holding it, she's keeping in front of her because she appreciates the person that gave her the thing to hold. Let's go to the meaning of the word spinster. Please. Who has a complaint now about the meaning of responsible? <coughs> okay. You? Any problem? Any problem about the meaning of responsible? <coughs> what you understand by spinster? Um, because before you carry your seat, I came here. <laughs> you believe that you are spinster? <laughs> I want to be sure that you knew what you Okay, is somebody speaking here. Former or married woman. Former or married woman. Former or married woman. Are you hearing that? It means what? Former and married. No, we are going to that. We are going to explain it. Hello? Another definition. So it means we have informal. Let's hear, let's hear, let's hear, let's hear. A single lady that has never been married. A single lady has never been married. Is there something different from the two? Someone wants to add something? One more? One more definition. Okay, we have to Oh, the last one now. Someone who has attained the age of marriage but is not yet married. <laughs> so what's the fun now? <laughs> Why are you talking about all the definitions which should be correct in their ways? Let me bring my own to add. From the Western Dictionary. Man, who is not married? Especially an older woman who is not likely to marry. Don't it again. It's not me now. Okay. So I think what you don't like, what you don't 
you met. Is that last fact? You know what we should do? Let's try There's no husband in the house. Is it not? Yes. So, you are welcome. Thank you. We are not sending some people away. Eh? We are not sending us. That common point is all the discussion. We are not married. Only that is this. Formal marriage, there's informal marriage. There's marriageable age. There's one that may not marry again. Even though it's old enough to marry. So from these definitions, it is clear that spinsterhood is a season of one's life in which God expects accountability. In which God expects us to be trustworthy. In which God says you can't be lying below if you're not careful. Is there any with a celebration end with a cause? You can end with a judgment. Is there a celebration? What it says, you are come to it means for the whole season of your life, there will be an accountability. There will be no space that is left without explanation given to the honor of the life. And so it's very important that we, as speakers, let's begin to ask ourselves, in this season of life, does God know you are sick? Does God know you are sick now? Yes. Now, let me mention something very important from the definition she gave. I was very happy when she brought that point. I had planned to bring it. Do you know that some of us are not actually single? And that's what we are missing out in this definition. Some of us are not married in the official sense. But we are not single in the official sense. It's a formal way. And it's a formal way. So to be single, you must be really single. To be single by English means what? How many? Just one. Is it possible to become single but not single? Yes. I like that. So we are talking about singles. Now, if you are here and hearing my voice, as I'm speaking, I believe the Holy Spirit is telling you already that you are not single. You are coupled in your mind, you are coupled in your emotion, you are coupled in your dream. <laughs> no, no, no. You are coupled in your hostels for students. They are landladies and they have landlords. <laughs> Even in the choir, they are paid them off. There are couples in the choir. Mm -hmm. In church. Mm -hmm. There is no official, formal. <laughs> you see what you have done? You are really liable. So I put it to you. <laughs> Who is here and claiming to be single? But you are not single. Because you are informally married and couple, <laughs> you are doing what married people are doing. 
I put it to you that you are liable to judge me. And now we are smiling, but it's serious. Yes. That's where he responds to the gifts. It's a symptom of singleness. It's a season of singleness. And that's the point of time that Paul was talking about. I wish you were like me, single. It's a season that God acknowledges and God releases some special grace and special privileges that heaven will record that was that was what you achieved. For the sake of God, you endure endured things. You went through issues. You suffered things because you are a responsible single. You endured a lot of things and heaven recorded it. That during that season, you are accounting for everything. You preserve everything. You, you were accountable to your body parts and that used. And you are not acting single. You are really single. Remember, we are talking about you are answerable. You are accountable. You are liable. And you are carrying a burden. You are carrying a burden. So, please, as I have said that, we may mention it in future, but I, I, I have to make that at the beginning. So, your definition, you yourself should examine yourself and begin to know where you are entangled, where you are entangled. Some of us stand and, and lost after a man. You can even be married or a bachelor. We lost and we begin to plan to get that back. Because we don't want to go through the process of being seen. We want to force it. Use our own manipulations to get out of the season instead of using it for the glory of God. Let's go on now. <coughs> We are going to look at it, some lifestyles of women before they were married and be able to pick out some issues of singleness that shows responsibility. And we are going to also see some women who have lived and sacrificed so much of their single life for the glory of God. I want you to know before I go into this discussion that when the trumpet sounds, being married will not be an issue. Mm -hmm. Being single will not be a disadvantage. If anything, it can be an advantage. So that you don't despise this season of your life and treat it with levity. Treat it with lack of lightness because the society is treating you casually. You yourself join the society and treat yourself casually. At least if nobody, if someone doesn't value you, someone doesn't know you are worth, you should know. If nobody knows who you are, you should know who you are and you can reintroduce yourself to the site who you are. It's very important. That's the beginning of responsibility. Know who you are. Know your worth. If you go to a church and they say, they will say, all oh, men of but married people and mothers and everything, you are, you are, you are not even mentioned. Doesn't mean that God has not mentioned you. To begin to feel like that is the beginning of irresponsibility. Because you are, you, already you are getting depressed. Is it just because the small girl got married? She has just become somebody. Hmm. I want you to get that, please. As we begin discussion, 
You begin to call yourself to other places. Call yourself to others. You begin to appreciate that God has given you this season of life. God has called to you. God is releasing something to your hands. Hold it for me. In this season of your life, you are free to drop it and run after a man and become a couple in form of <laughs> Or at least, like some girls say, and I appreciate their sincerity. He said, they say, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Eh? How can they allow Jesus to come and have not had sex? <laughs> at least, that just is great if it comes. I want them to be able to find who she is avenging them. They look for the best time to help them smoke the food. You know, I'm having men stop pain and they say that because my bed, somebody can just help me. And many men help her. <laughs> they have sent the help and she's done the same again. So let's pass this. Let's look at the story of this woman. One of the women I want to use. I will mention many other women along the way. I want to use Rebecca. At least who knows how old she was when she got married? Who knows how old she was? I give you assignments. Assignments. Yes. No, so let's, let's not guess. Let's give us an assignment. Don't you think so? If nobody knows the answer, on Friday, please bring the answer. He's coming back in fish. Friday. 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 Genesis chapter 24. From verse 1, please. Genesis 24. From verse 1. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in everything he did. He said to his oldest servant, who was in charge of all that he had, Place your hand between my thighs and make a vow. Then John, you know, let's go. I want you to make a vow in the name of the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not choose a wife for my son from the people here of in Kenya. Then let's go to verse 10. What Abraham told the servant to do, he did it. Abraham, the servant has done it and now he's on his way. Maybe the servant in verse 10, who was in charge of Abraham's property, took 10 of his master's camels, 10, take note of the number, 10 of his master's camels, went to the city where Nahor had lived in northern Mesopotamia. When he arrived, he met the camels kneel down at the well outside the city. It was late afternoon, the time when women came out to get water. He prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, give me success today and keep your promise to my master. Here I am at the well, where the young men of the city will be coming to get water. I will say to one of them, please, lower your jar, let me have a drink. If she says, drink, and I will also bring water for my ca your camels, May she be the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. If this happens, I will know that you have kept your promise to my master. Before I had finished praying, Rebecca arrived with a water jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, who was the son of Abraham's brother Nahor, and his wife Milcom. She was a very beautiful young woman, and still a virgin. She went down to the well, filled her jar, and came back. The servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a drink of water from your jar. She said, Drink, sir, and quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and held it while he drank. When he had finished, she said, 
I will also bring water to your camels and let them have all they want. So she quickly emptied a jar into the animal's drinking trough and ran to the well to get more water until she had watered all his camels. The man kept watching her in silence. See if the Lord has given him success. Okay, we'll stop there. Now, the discussion we want to have is to look at issues of responsibility in the life of that single woman. Are you hearing? There is something there about Rebecca. Number one point to check about responsibility is that her spiritual identity was clearly spelled out. She was a spiritual girl. She was a spiritual girl. She was a spiritual girl. So the first sign of responsibility is to know whether you are a spiritual woman. And what about spiritual? Someone with an identity that is godly. A godly identity. Someone that God has given birth to. Somebody that was not among the daughters of the land. You know very well that Abraham called the servant and told the servant to do what? He said he should do what? <laughs> he should bow. Bow. What does it mean to bow? Like so make a promise, a very serious promise. And what makes it so serious? He said he should put his hands away. That was serious. That was very serious. That you are going to find a girl that is different from the girl, the ladies. Find a young woman. What? Find a woman different from the women that I'm seeing in this city. I'm staying. Listen very well. Abraham has lived there for some time. He saw many kinds of women, hmm. but he said, "Please, it's very dangerous for my son to enter the hand of a wrong woman." There are many singles here. But they are dangerous ones. Please, take a vow. And when you go, look for the one that is different. Go back to where God is worshipped in my place. Look for a very day. If you were to follow up, because I had to shorten the time of reading, you would say, but please, never, never, one thing. Even if you go and no girl has said to come, make sure you don't give any of these singles you are seeing here. Any of these pistas you are seeing here. And what do you think Abraham was seeing? Irresponsibility. Which man, which father, who want to throw away his life into the hand of an irresponsible person? It's for death. <laughs> If you want to know how to this, please open to Ecclesiastes 7.26. Someone should just open to see, read loud for us. Ecclesiastes 7.26. Okay, hold on. Someone is reading here. I find more bitter than death. A woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, whose hands are chains, the man who pleases God will escape her. Hello, please read again. Let's hear the characteristics of an irresponsible sister. Read again, please. I find more with and death. The woman who is a snare. The woman who is a snare. Please, what is a snare? A trap. Anyone that comes close to her is trapped. He her life. Her idol is a man. If she's not with a man or couple with a man, or someone is a boyfriend, has a boyfriend, or someone is she's she looks like she's she becomes restless. So if a man just, a brother, 
Just want to just, just your normal brother is just joking. You should trust him. Go on. Go on, go on. Whose heart is a trap? Hold on, please. Hello. How does a heart of a woman become a trap? <laughs> please, you know. <laughs> Don't you know? Okay, somebody has invention. Let her read. Hold on. Read. Here is what I discovered. A bad woman is worse than death. A bad woman is worse than death. She is a trap. She is a trap. Reaching out with body and soul to catch. Reaching out with body and soul to catch. Catch you. Catch you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know you. Catch <laughs> a man, gone. But if you obey God, if you obey God, you can escape. You can escape. <laughs> if you don't obey God, <laughs> you are done for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a daughter of God being addressed like this? Can you imagine the daughter of God being addressed as a trap? She's so restless in life. Her God is a man. And that's why I'm going to see the difference in this life. In fact, if the man smiles too much, the way I see the way he's smiling, he must be, he's trying to say something. <laughs> the last time I came, he smiled and greeted me. The other day, he smiled and greeted me. The other time, even when we go to Brooklyn, the Emily, he came because of me. <laughs> and I'm just thinking that he's trying to say something, only I don't know how to say it. <laughs> and now that the righteous is as bold as a lion, <laughs> I'll be bold to tell you what I <laughs> So I'm just finding bold, boldness and courage to tell you what he cannot tell you. That is. Is it not making you sad? The woman who is addressing an irresponsible woman. It's very sad. I've not read some yet. I read some passages. I think just what our sister was saying in the morning, I don't know what It is women that God is counting on to make a difference. I said, it's women that God is counting on to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And the moment we are not responsible, we destroy it. And we displace ourselves. It's a big disgrace. Looking at the life, that story about that woman that we had to fight, that is part of a man. She her heart is just accumulating everything and interpreting everything and expecting everything. Why? Mm. She's preoccupied too much. So let's look at Rebecca. Abraham said, Don't capture, don't, don't allow any of these girls to capture my, my son. Go and look for a girl. Go out and look for a girl. The Bible says that. A man who seeks for a wife and obtain fell from the Lord. Do not say a woman who seeks for a husband and obtain fell from the Lord. So keep looking for, trap them, catch, control them, marry them. So what I'm trying to say is that Abraham knew the lifestyle of those guys. They were like this one. And he knew he was very dangerous for Isaac in that place. And said, please go and look for one. The right one. Go fast. This one he knew how lazy they were. You know? He knew how lazy. He knew that said, use what you have to get what you do. That's it. That's the of irresponsibility. Use what you have to get what you want. And are we not getting grace? Are we not getting results? 
Hey? Oh, okay, okay. How about the results? You come back. BSC and BH. You never work for it. You just use your body. And it's good. So, she was not a Canaanite. That's the spiritual identity. She was a true, true Israel. A true child of God. She was not a stranger to God. She was not a foreigner to the covenant lifestyle. She was God's specimen woman. Let's look at her assignment. What do you notice know about um, Rebecca? She identified with the duties of women in our time. Did you notice that? She identified with the duties and the roles of women in our time. But in our generation, what is happening now? Do we like the role that has to do with women? No. To us, it's degrading. That was Rebecca. She identified her assignment as a woman and was focused with it. She understood the times and the season of womanhood. Rebecca was among the first to visit the world at the time of evening. Mm -hmm. You know the time that women go out to draw water. What does that reveal about Rebecca? She was, she was not lazy. Hello, please, some of us are even living alone. If someone enters your room, do not believe the woman is living there. I'm sure, please close your eyes more and remember your name. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Even those of us in our offices. When a woman enters an office, it should be different. It goes with woman. Womanhood is beauty. We carry beauty with us. We carry beauty in our bodies. We carry beauty in our soul. We carry beauty to our environment. No woman should enter a place and exclude it. Some of us are staying with our disciples. Some are staying with their parents. Some are staying, but that house you are staying, since you enter, what difference are they experiencing? What difference? In fact, it's a right. Just eat. Go. It's the back to join them to cook good. If not, who will eat and drop the... As they cry here, shout here about death, I, 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 I get very sad that women will have a conference and see pure water back on the ground. If men have a conference and children and youth, irresponsible responsible people can have a conference, and then young, younger people. When a woman enters the environment, there's discretion. She not drop this one here. No, it's not. It's not beautiful. She not. I do not begging women not to bath outside. Mm -hmm. I do not begging them not to pass the wine and kiss it outside. Mm -hmm. So there was discretion. There was serious uh, diligence. Look at her when she visited the well. She went on time. Among the first to be there, she was a time. Good time manager. Please take note of that. A good time manager. She enjoyed being a woman to the core. She enjoyed being a woman. Now in our time we have the feminine spirit. When women are now fighting the wish they were men. It's not just the dressing in their hearts. They hate men and want to be men. They want to compete with men. They want to revive with men. Because they feel they're inferior. That's the response. You are not inferior. You are only different. You are equal worth with God and with the, with the, with the man. That's how God makes it. Make men and females in his own image. You know? He reveals her as someone who likes to work. With human rights now, and through this spirit, many of our women, many of our singles, hate domestic work. And, and many of us, what we are doing like that, have gone to school, I'm a career woman, so let me get the money I need to get, get a car, take care of myself, and uh, so on. 
you know. And we can pay someone to do it. We don't enjoy those. Did you see that she had a mind to carry bone? Did you see that in her life? What did you see? Hello? She did what? Where is the hand? Somebody came to me. Did she have a sense that she don't like life burn bone? Please, what indicated that? Fetch water for the man and the camel. Why did she carry a water pot on her shoulder? How many of us? No, just imagine her. A very beautiful girl. Please, who is not beautiful here? Hello? Please, who is not beautiful here? No, I saw your hand. Uh, someone raised her hand. I don't see anything that's ugly here. Do you think you are not beautiful? You are beautiful. You don't believe it. All the math they gave you. Don't worry. You are still beautiful. You are still beautiful. You know why you are still beautiful? Because you have a soul. Yes. And the, and the character comes out. And no man marries you just because you are. No normal man will just go for a cheap He smokes you and that's all. The character inside is show Thank you so much. So you see, she carried one. She carried it. Did you, did you notice that she did not mind carrying it? She did it joyfully. After giving the man, please describe how she gave the man. He said something about her. But before we come there, let me even come. When she went to the well, the man and the camel, I think they, they were there. Yes. Please, what did Rebecca do? She said, <laughs> 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 I, I thought she, she dropped the other part. I think it's even here. She tried to adjust it. <laughs> so what, what did she do by here? She went straight. She was focused. She was focused. None of us will just miss. You know, just in the last time, we will come for this. And we forgot what I went for. And we now see our kind. I'm not going to tell you. I'm busy. You know, we are just on a dress. Uh, and I just are uh, walking fast. We can walk small. And then when you walk, when you can walk, no one do. Oh, God, baby. As I'm going in front, what are they doing? They're looking back. Where are the pieces again? <laughs> because they know what they're doing. Uh, don't you get a little encouragement. <laughs> But you know, this Rebecca was one of the girls. She went straight. Fetch the water. Who ran after her? Please, give me a drink. Now let's look at the kindness of a responsible speaker. And we're not finding the many now. That's so, that's so masculine in their talk, in their outlook. The words that come out of their mouth are so dry. Not words of kindness. But I want you please imagine Rebecca. A very beautiful girl. And the servant is an older man. He came out. He said, please, can you give me water? She was gentle. How many of us when we are serving men? Around. Are you going to do this? How many of us are so kind? Are so gentle? Are so modern? When you are even serving with men around? I don't see the auntie. 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 Any other one is Banzani. It's not your sweetheart. Hey! You can tell me what you are. Which one? How about yourself and you have two or four legs? How can you ask me? Who are you, sir? <laughs> but, Kai, this girl was well-trained. 
A responsible girl is a girl who has submitted to training. He's a cop chop girl. A cop chop woman. And she does that. Not just because of a man. Because it's her character. She's not acting. It's her life. Do you see that she gave the water? And she held it. You know what she said? She held the water to the mouth of the man. Until, the Bible said, until she, he has done with drinking. She stood down, held the water. When he had finished drinking, wait, if it's her own, what do you think? And the next if you even try that one, what will you expect next? Thank you! God bless you! If you did that, you expect thank you. And if you you expect to tell you no. Let me even see. Uh, when I say something. And uh, if he passes two, three minutes, he did not say thank you. What do you think our girls and our women will do now? In fact, they will do that now. Great pussy, I wasted my time for an old man. <laughs> oh my God, my dear. The way God programmed us, the way God programmed a woman. Was to bring attention, was to capture the attention of the man, man her lifestyle. It was supposed to be a mystery to the man. Please check the other version. Say the man, the man became. Let me finish with the camera. The man was amazed. Did you notice that? In another version, said the man was amazed. Was ah. now how many cameras were there? Please, my dear. Who yeah. oh, are uh, geography, zoology? Why well, don't you know how much water one camel will drink, please? Yes, please help us. Ten jars. Ten jars. And a, a jar is about how many gallons? Like about 20 liters. Hello? Now, please, did the man now kneel down there? I beg you, please, if you can just help my camel. Who initiated to help? A responsible spinster initiate her. Oh, 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 I don't want to tell you that the blessings of not for not initiating her, even for those who are married. Let me tell you. The, the, the blessings of love for not initiating her. Not that they beg you to do it, you just pray and God directly, you go and just stand. I choose to help in this way. I'm need to meet up here. I'm willing to. And you become. I'm coming to that. Very amazing. Very amazing. And please look at how she kept water to the camels. She did it longishly. So I don't know why he said I want to give. I made a mistake. Please look at your vision very well. Look at ways that describe the attitude with which she did the job. Look at the look at the man. Mention some words that show it. You see, hastily, quickly, run back. So I want you to imagine this girl. Quickly. Running back and forth. Back and forth. I was pouring into the trunk, you know, a big blessing where you can pour for them. Back and forth, back and forth, until some camels drank it or all of them. Please, please. Eh? Without a word, God bless you. She was quiet and gentle. A responsible sister, a responsible woman is quiet and gentle. Not many words. She was not talking. Do you notice that she has strength? <coughs> strength to walk. You see, God was the issue of laziness. And no strength to walk. She took initiative and did that great work. She was a burden bearer. That proved her as a world can be dead body. And as you notice that, after she has given all the cameras, please, what did the man? How did the man look at her? Check the Bible. Check the Bible. Hello? The man wondered. 
that one language. What other language? He walks carefully. Watch in silence. He did not say a word. He was just amazed. He was just astonished. Oh my God. This is just a unique specimen of a woman. This is just too special to miss. I pray that the Lord will begin to use some stars among us. Amen. You go to a place and it says, Christ, people will just automatically begin to pray for you. Mm. That prayer request you don't give, mm. God will keep them to your life. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm married to a man that I've never really known before. They only ask about me. He lived in Jos and lived in Canada. Never seen him. But once. And that once. The next thing was I proposed. I never knew him. He said he knows me. He said he has watched me for some time without talking to me. And here I am here. Married for over 31. I for over 30 years to a man I never met who met me by seeing me for a watching what I was doing and never talked to me. So my sisters, Rebecca and Everton, are very responsible sisters. She had a mind to carry the burden of life joyfully. She provided her shoulder for the burden and saving the needs of others without grumbling or murmuring. Hey, my dear sisters, how we murmur, how we stay in place and gossip. We go to areas that doesn't concern us. We don't busy bodies. We check the song of the man. We check the song of the woman. Don't mind them. See, so proud. This one. We We just remove value from us. <coughs> when we act like that, you know what we do? It's like something you take to market and you reduce the price because he's getting corrupted. Who the day he's getting corrupted and he's reducing value. And who does that? You do it to yourself. You do it to yourself, and that's the painful part. Removing value from your life. I'm saying. She, her consecration was obvious. Take note of that. And she knew that. And the man knew. Please, who told the man that this girl has never slept with a man? Do you know that in the schools God communicates about you? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, there's, there's an aura around you that, that is communicated in the school to somebody. That's why when you go to a place, you don't even know the man. So one man just following you like that, he must rape you. Have you found out why? Eh? Have you noticed that you go to a place? You are a visitor in the place. But somebody follows you like he wants to love you. A strange man just took in charge of you. Strange, not believer. Do you know what happens? Some of us carry an aura, a presence around you. That says, come on. Come on. <coughs> not consecrated. Not sacred. Come on. Not consecrated. Not sacred. It's an hour. It's a special motive. And so when Rebecca entered the place, no one told he had not met Rebecca. He saw the presence of God around her. The said, God, this is not a Canaanite. And this girl. He's a specimen. He's one of a kind. There's something about her that shows untouchable, uncommon. Let me tell you, is there something I prayed and I cried when I was kissing you? I prayed for that. I asked God to please, Lord. 
I want your presence, Lord. I want to saturate with your presence. That no man will want to marry me except the one you had. If I enter a place, Lord, I should cause commotion. You should feel that somebody has entered who is not a normal one. I don't know why my husband married me, except God. There's no way. I was human being to be pitied. Are you hearing me? <laughs> no, honestly. I was, for, from a human point of view, as you look at me, you speak to me. Very unfortunate from a natural part. <laughs> no! <laughs> from a natural eye, I, I was to be pitied. To be well pitied, I was dried up. I was very poor. And I suffered in life. Okay? I suffered in life till my veins could be counted on my body. So as a single person, that's what I look like. Dried up. No size. Make a big skirt. Gathered cotton skirt to wear under my dress. So that I miss your shit more. So, you might think, but when the glory of God is upon your life, God, He knows you by name. He knows your address. And He can package you, introduce you. And making you something from the I'm not speaking because I want to to cajole you, please. I'm speaking because the Lord is very dependent. I'm not speaking because of marriage. I'm speaking because of the glory you must carry. You must carry a glory. That when you enter a place, they should identify you as sacred, not common, as clean, not unclean. There should be an aura around you. That one is, in fact, is, don't, don't joke with it, please. If you have never prayed about it, begin today. You need to pray that the Lord should constitute your life. And put his presence when you enter a place. I want to tell you that presence has fought me. Because I don't want to part with it even when I'm mad. I've entered places, even in this. I've entered places that I could have entered, but because of the presence of the Lord, doors have been opened physically. I remember the first time I went to the government house, to see. God said, Go there. Sent the message to the first lady. And I, I wasn't on a fancy, but I went and drove there. And I was surprised that they opened the door, took the officer, opened the door. Hey, excuse me, madam, you're welcome, come in. And I told you, Go. And I was taken straight. It's when they reached the place and tell me, There were two doors. Madam, you can go in. I said, Which one? That's what I've never been there. <laughs> and I tell you, I, I hate that. Whatever God wants to be what he found the first lady was spoken, what did she have to do? She did it. She has never met me. She said, Oh, I've watched you on TV. No, we, we spoke. We prayed. We did what God wants to do. She went back. So it's literal, God can put his glory, mm-hmm. can put his presence. Yes, That's what we're looking for. So as we try to end today, uh, our relation with the male, my little, she had to be approached by the man. Someone ran to me to talk about that. And now look at her expression. She said, drink my Lord, or in contemporary, drink sir. Do you notice that? Mm-hmm. She, she, what does it say about her? Respectful and what else? Having got this of caution. Humble. What else? 
Fortnite. What else? Some Yes. Discipline. Oh, you hear from here? Yes. And I, I thought also that she had a submissive food. Who would call the man my lord? Sarah. So, this girl is not yet mad. And see how she is a man. Not even the man that married, but the older man. But she said, my lord, yes sir. We don't have that culture again. And if that culture is not found among us women, is it will be found in the world? So we should a submissive son. Somebody submissive to authority. Please, a responsible person that is submissive to authority. Recognize the authority figure and submit. She turned herself to labor, we have talked about it. And she finished the assignment well, did she? Yes. She is not only a starter. Take note, many of you are starters. You don't finish what you start. The responsible person is not just a starter. Not just only in shape, but she finishes and finishes well. Until what is done, she is not done. Every time she she, she was done before she embarked on another one. And we said already that she has trained herself to labor. We said that. We said that she is a one that remains in our generation. <coughs> and that's it. And the man wondering at her tells his feet. What was the man wondering? The man was wondering at the grace and the glory of God in the life of a responsible sister. I don't know about Red Mark, Captain Kuma, and many other sisters. The grace of God has lavished upon us, brings a wonder. And that's why, even if you have to wait, you are waiting longer than you thought. You thought you have been married by now, and you are still waiting. Now, what? What will keep you if you are not going to place his grace to enrich you with his grace? The Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 16, 16 hey, this is 16 years. You can check it. It says, A graceful woman returns honor. A graceful woman returns honor. And I define graceful as a woman full of grace. The one that God has introduced and lavished her with grace. In fact, that grace keeps her beautiful. That grace keeps her joyful. That grace keeps her servicing the needs of others. Instead of withdrawing to her own shell, thinking about her needs. Nobody cares how I'm feeling. Nobody cares what I'm going through. Nobody cares. That kind of woman has the grace has filled her life. He is a woman that has so much that he throws out to others. She's giving up. She's telling the little mother. She's giving up. And that makes her more and more beautiful. More and more glorious. And if Jesus comes, you know that what she has invested, she will lose. The those who waited in idleness for marriage, what happens to them? They will lose. They will lose. So, we said here as we close, that the Lord will so package you that you become a wonder to the men around. Amen. That was my prayer. That was that God granted me. God granted me. Let me tell you. In 1976, I was already teaching in Sunday school. How many of you were born? In 1976, okay. <laughs> in 1976, I was a teacher in Sunday school. And I did. And I was a mother of five children. <laughs> <laughs> no, not my mama, that's you. Many children had to be gone. Because my father died when I was four. And he had no brother, no sister, nobody to take care. My mother had to go back to teacher college. She to go to school so she can come out and teach in power school. So all the five children, I was in the six, were two to me. To care for them, pay their school fees. Hello? Yeah. Pay their school fees, take off them while she goes back. She do teacher college from one. And food was not very enough for the six of us. 
So many times I will allow them to eat first. If it remains out. So that was the source of my being very dried up. Very unhealthy. Vents all of that. Food was not in look. I rode the small bicycle to the ground because where I talk was this long. I had to leave where it was closer to the primary school so that we can go to school. And where I thought was far, I had to be riding bicycle. I thought it's very sad. I'm doing it to you. look at me. But you know one thing, and I want to conclude here for today. When men who cannot see things crucially will shake their head. Mm. When women, I say, hey, yeah. I will smile and tell them I'm on the journey. I will still reach my destination. Yes, ma'am. And I will announce my arrival. Yes, sir. So, responsible syndrome. It's a learner. It's a disciple. It's not open to counsel. When you go back, you read. As a dancer in verse 28, she ran home and told the mother. Was somebody else open. She was not secretive. Many of us are so secretive that we lack help in our lives. We specialize in keeping secrets. And with God, it's very nice. And most, most comfort is most wisdom. And so you refuse to open up. You keep the secret. You get destroyed with it. Men, men. About another sister, as I mentioned in closing, uh, Miriam. You know Miriam? Yes. The senior sister of. Yes. She was responsible at the time. Very, very responsible. I want, I want you to imagine if she persisted in her responsibility and continued to the end. Who could have been Miriam? Miriam the prophetess, that God revealed a song even when they crossed the cross the rest. The song we are still singing today. Miriam that waited by the I was at a mother's heart. Because a responsible spinster has a mother's heart. Take note of that. She is a mother in her right. You don't need to give birth before you're a mother. A responsible has a womb. And when you offer your womb, Fiscally to the Lord, return to the Lord, the Lord will give you children, yes. your mother. The only time he will tell you the life you have touched. Only time he and the only time he will tell you that you are a leverage of our life as a mother. Because Jesus has the heart of a mother. Can a mother forget? Some can, but I will not. And there is no woman to forget about mother. Because it's an it's an evil thing that is there. And that's why when a sister commits abortion, it's a violence against the unborn. And she's acting as a very irresponsible by killing her kind. It's better to give birth. It's better not to sin to that. She fails to sin, she doesn't have to be. It's better. So as we conclude, Remember Miriam. She was toying with the grace of God in her life. The fact that God has spoken to her became a pride. Because she could do some things. God used her in different ways. What did she do? Who is what Moses said? Pride came in. Pride came in. Please, I don't know. Some of you have different gifting to the Lord. Spiritual gifts that the Lord has given you. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out what is happening in your heart because of what God is using you to do. Watch out. Be very, very careful. Miriam at the end of the time, she ended up to be a leper. And her ministry came suddenly to an end. Can you imagine the woman that laid other women? This single woman laid other mothers and other women to the presence of God. I hope you know that. In some Led the whole nation. I just want God to use a single person to do, a spencer to do. She led the whole nation to the presence of God. 
Thank <laughs> you. 